Good evening growers, it's Thursday, January 28th, and it is freezing cold here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina. Uh, we are getting some of our coldest weather of the season right now, so now is a great time to do some indoor work that I've been meaning to do for a while. Earlier in the year, I posted a video on how to root fig cuttings, and not all of the cuttings worked out for me. One of the cuttings that failed for me is this cutting right here, which is a very rare and expensive a uh, fig cutting called Borgeso Negra Ramada, which is a striped Ramada fig. And this cutting did not root for me at all. Uh, but I just dug it out and I made a fresh clean cut and removed the node and it still looks like it's in pretty good shape. And uh, while some of it is dried up and not looking all that great, it does have this little butt on top that I think is still viable. And overall, it still looks pretty good. So I think this will be a great opportunity to make a grafting video. If you've ever researched grafting tools before, you'll know that the most common way and the age-old way of grafting is with a grafting knife. But recently, these grafting tools right here have become a pretty hot commodity, and they have pretty mixed reviews. Now, I've only ever grafted a fig tree once, and I did use this tool, and the graft was successful. Uh, but I actually want to do a little review of these grafting tools and show, hey, do they actually work? Are they really any good? Because like I said, I've only done this once before with these tools. So let's give it a try. And for grafting right here, I have a rooted cutting of my Chicago Hardy uh, fig tree that I decided to, uh, I rooted a couple of clones of it just to have as root stock in case I wanted to graft something over the winter. And when you root, you want the root stock to be roughly about the same diameter as the scion wood. That's what this cutting is called right here. It's called the scion wood. And while this shoot right here does look a little bit thinner, I think overall it will be a good pairing. Now for my money, I always prefer to root fig cuttings over grafting them onto root stock. And the reason why is because I live in zone 8A, it is possible that we could get a really bad winter and it could kill my fig trees down to the roots. And if I were to graft scion wood onto all of this root stock and a cold winter came and it killed all my fig trees down to the roots, I'd be left with multiple copies of the root stock. I would lose all of my scion wood. So it's always beneficial for me to grow figs on their own roots. However, grafting can be advantageous because it can help us hedge our bets onto whether or not our cuttings will be successful because we can take little pieces of wood like this and graft it onto rootstock and also try to root the cutting at the same time so we kind of double our chances for success. And because this cutting is probably about six weeks old at this point, the chances of it rooting are slim, I think I'll have a better chance at actually um, using this bud as scion wood and having success with the graft because it looks pretty healthy. So in order to be fair, I'm going to try to do this whole video with this grafting tool. And I should mention that I did spray uh, this off with bleach beforehand, so it has been cleaned and sanitized. You don't want to make your cuts with dirty tools. So what I'm going to try to do here is I'm going to try and get as close to the wood as possible when I make my cut right here. So before I get any further, I want to try and protect that bud because it, it looks pretty dried out and it's pretty old. So I'm going to take this roll of parafilm right here and I'm going to wrap up this bud. And the reason why I'm doing this now is uh, once I attach this to the rootstock, it is going to be very hard to wrap because I might break it off if I pull on it too hard. So that's why I want to do this now. So I want to preserve what little humidity is left in there, and that's what I've done. Now it might be a little bit hard to see how this grafting tool works, but the way it works is, uh, this is the, the razor right here, this is the cutter. This is a V-shaped cutter. So when it comes out like this, it presses and it makes a V-shaped cut into the wood. So it's important that you flip it over when you do the uh, the rootstock and the scion wood because they need to match up. So if you make the scion wood into a downward uh, V shape, which we'll call the male end, you need to reverse it so you cut the um, the rootstock into a female end to accept the male end. And I'll show you how to do that. Now this is going to be pretty hard to show, but I actually want this to be the male end of the wood. So I want um, I want this to point downward. So it's important that I center this in 
uh, to make the cut. So if you can see in here, this will give a V shape to the scion wood right here. So I'm going to try my best. So this right here is the wood that we are going to insert into the rootstock. And what is important here is that uh, when you insert the wood, the cambium layers of the rootstock and the cambium layer of the scion wood have to touch. If at least one of the cambium layers doesn't touch, then you are not going to have a successful graft. And the cambium layer is the green layer inside the wood. So it's, it's this layer right here. And uh, because the cutting is kind of old, it doesn't look all that green, but I'll be able to show it better on the, on the rootstock. So right here is our rootstock, and we want to make sure that the diameter of the rootstock wood that we use is roughly identical to the diameter of the scion wood. Uh, we don't want there to be a huge difference or else they may not mate up well. So I'm going to make a cut right here. And then remember, our scion wood is like the male end, so we need to reverse this for the rootstock wood. We need to, uh, we need to have it accept the male end. So in order to do that, I'm going to make the cut you have to line things up very well and now you can see what that looks like and the uh, scion wood should fit pretty much perfectly in there so that looks like a very precise cut and again it is of critical importance that the cambium layer of the scion wood and the cambium layer of the rootstock match up and you can clearly see uh, around the edge of the rootstock, right up against the bark, there is this green wood layer. That is the New Year's wood. That wood needs to touch. They need to make contact in order to accept the graft. So we are going to be extremely careful that the cambium layers touch. Because if the cambium layers don't touch, at least in one spot, the graft will not take. The entire graft doesn't have to touch, but there has to be contact between cambium layers at some point. Now you can see here that the cambium layers on this side of the graft are touching perfectly. And the other side of the graft doesn't look quite as good at the, at, as this. It's, uh, it's not touching perfectly, but again, we only need one side to line up. And now that our graft is lined up, we need to uh, with firm pressure, wrap that graft up in parafilm. And you need to make sure that you are firm handed when wrapping this because this graft has to be held in place firmly or it will not take. So you have to be pretty heavy handed with uh, the parafilm. And if you don't have parafilm, you can just use grafting tape. All of these things are linked in my Amazon storefront. You just need to make sure that this is nice and tight to hold everything in place. And you also want to make sure that uh, this little tiny scion tip bud does not dry out because believe me when I tell you it doesn't take much for these little bits of wood to dry out. So I'm checking this over and it looks like this V notch is held in there very well. So now I'm going to take a rubber band and uh, this rubber band is going to add more pressure to the graft and hold it in place. And you need to make sure that it's directly over those V notches just to make sure it's holding it down in place with appropriate pressure. And you, again, you want this pressure to be pretty firm. Now the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my rootstock and I'm going to place it over by the rest of my cuttings. I'm not going to put it on a heat mat or anything like that. I'm going to put it in a semi-direct sunlight. So I actually want a few hours of sunlight to kiss this uh, rootstock every now and again because I want it to eventually encourage that bud to swell. So. Uh, if everything goes according to plan, sitting in um, an indirectly sunny window like that, in about maybe three weeks or so, 
I'm hoping I'm going to start seeing some bud swell. And if that bud up here starts swelling, that is a good sign that my scion wood graft has taken to the rootstock. So we'll check in in a few weeks and we'll see what happens. All right, it's now February 13th and because I had this tree inside for so long, it is starting to wake up very early. So I have some buds that are forming here and here and these buds are actually in the root stock. We don't want that to happen. We don't want this tree to bud out because if it does, it will siphon energy away from the graft. So we want to actually pinch these buds off, remove them. We don't want the root stock to bud out because that's just wasted energy. So I'm taking these three buds off and hopefully that will prevent leafing out here because if that were to leaf out here, that would be bad news for the graft. So now they've all been removed and we'll continue to wait to see life in the graft. And here we are on Thursday, March 18th. The bud started to swell a few weeks ago and now it has formed its first true leaf. And because we're doing this in the winter, the metabolism of the plant is pretty slow. So that's why it took so long, but it appears to have been successful. And I am two for two with this grafting tool. So I am pretty happy to say that these grafting tools do in fact work. And I think they are a really good tool for the novice grafter. Do I think that these grafting tools are going to be adopted by the old school grafting pros? No, I don't think they'll be well accepted with the old school grafting pros, but for novices such as myself and for others that are interested in getting starting with grafting, I do think they are a good solution to get your feet wet and learn how the process works because clearly they do work. And in my two attempts, I was successful both times. Just make sure that you get those cambium layers touching each other. And then from there, it's just simply an act of patience. So everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. If you found it helpful, please make sure to hit that like button. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please subscribe for future updates and more videos like these. Again, if you're curious about this grafting tool or any of the other products that I use in my garden, they are all linked in my Amazon storefront in the video description. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see all of you again on the next video.